Hello, everybody. Welcome along to the very first episode of The Royal Exchange. My name is Dan Wimbush, and over the next half an hour or so, we'll be taking you behind the scenes here at Reading Football Club. And it's a very special week this week as we build up to the 500th game here at Medeski Stadium. Here's a little look at what's coming up in today's show. Coming up on today's Royal Exchange, I sit down with Reading Vice Captain Chris Gunter to talk about his Medeski Stadium memories, from watching Reading promoted as part of the opposition to what it was like to be part of two Wembley clinching nights. We've got plenty of build-up to tomorrow's 500th game of the Medeski against Burton Albion, including which game you voted the number one from the first 499 at the stadium, plus how manager Yaps Dam views tomorrow's game. All of that, plus we join Reading's players as they try and spread some Christmas cheer at the Royal Berkshire Hospital. So all of that to come, but in the meantime, let's go back a couple of weeks to the last time we played here at Medeski Stadium against Cardiff, followed up by a tricky trip to Portman Road. The Royals' 499th fixture at Medeski Stadium was on course to be the club's 246th win. Instead though, visiting Cardiff City battled back to force our 131st draw. It was Red who struck first as Liam Kelly's corner caused chaos in the Cardiff box. Callum Patterson the unlucky party as he glanced past his own goalkeeper. The second followed soon after. Lee Peltier dealt with the initial ball, but Mo Barrow couldn't have caught the volley much better and the slightest of deflections left Neil Everidge stranded. Sean Aluko was keen to get on in the act and as he worked space for himself in the Bluebirds box, Everidge's reactions prevented the margin being further extended. Barrow, who had already netted number six, was hungry for another, and his pressure gifted a chance for Jan Kermigant, who shot lap the conviction to open his account for the campaign. But the Bluebirds showed the quality and fight that has propelled them into the automatic promotion position so far this season and Junior Hoyler stooped to meet this header, a lucky escape for the Royals. Less than 10 minutes from time, Cardiff had their lifeline. The first ball in was cleared, but Joe Bennett thundered his left-footed effort through the crowd and into the corner. And as the game ticked into stoppage time, the Bluebirds finally found their leveller. Sol Bamba denied by the woodwork with this effort, but sub Lee Tomlin's follow-up was over the line by the underside of the bar. Any arguments from the Royals faithful were quickly settled by Hawkeye, which confirms the referee's decision. There was still time for late drama. Royal skipper Paul McShane joined the attack and was just a post whip away from nicking a late winner for the Royals. We moved on to Portman Road last Saturday, but it was an uphill struggle from the off. Less than three minutes had passed when Callum Connolly ghosted into the area and drove low inside the near post. High pressing on a nippy afternoon in Ipswich was bearing fruit for the hosts and Martin Waghorn was nearly the beneficiary as the ball was won in the Royals' half. Just past Manone's post this time. The Royals found their feet in the game though and wrestled back control and courtesy of a pinpoint pass from Liam Moore, Chris Gunter was allowed to cut back to countryman Dave Edwards. Jordan Spence arrived just in time and the Royals were made to pay after chances went begging. Town doubled their lead with a move straight from the training ground as a near post flick found Joe Garner on the far side to convert. Burr St Chilina could have extended the Tractor Boys' advantage with another move straight from the practice pitches, if not for the position of Liam Moore to clear off the line. Ipswich defended stoutly and gifted nothing. The closest the Royals went to a consolation was late on, as Kermigant rose above the crowd but directed his header off target. So, not the ideal results over the past couple of weeks, but we got a chance to put that all right against Burton here tomorrow. Let's have a little look at what Yapstam and club captain Paul McShane have been saying ahead of that one. It's always going to be nice to play in a, in a full house and, and uh, I think everybody's expecting, you know, the fans are expecting maybe and, and hopefully a good game as well and, and that's what we're expecting as well. You know, it's, it's still, if you play against Burton, it's, it's a difficult team to beat. They've proven that in the past. You know, but uh, playing at home and, uh, you know, in, in, in front of uh, a lot of fans, you know, you want to show yourself as a team, as an individual as well, and hopefully we can do that on Saturday. Yeah, it's a, it's a special feeling eh? every time I lead the team out, but um, hopefully there's a, a great atmosphere there on Saturday, being the 500 game, and um, 
yeah, something special for the fans. So yeah, hopefully it's a, it's a, you know make some noise and um, looking forward to it. Yeah, you know everybody's looking for that home run and that you can like uh, win. Well, the majority of games that you play at home, uh, that's what we're trying to do as well. And of course, sometimes you're more successful than other times. But um, I think in in well last season and and this season, of course, sometimes you can say, okay, we needed to do a bit better. Everybody realizes that as well, and um, and we're trying to do that, you know. And uh, and everybody is looking for that, uh, you know, consistency playing at home, and and, and hopefully we can do uh, do well on Saturday again, you know, and uh, and make uh, and make a good start again in uh, in picking up points. Of course, yeah. The more people there, the better. And uh, yeah, here there's going to be um, uh, more fans there on Saturday, so uh, hopefully we can give them. Something to shout about, and uh, yeah, just let's just hope it's a it's a it's a great atmosphere, and uh, you know, hopefully we, we get the the right result. You know, they, they've got um, they're working very hard as a team. You know, they've got good players, individually good players. You know, they've got a certain way of playing as well, and uh, away from home as well. If you let them play, then um, uh, they're going to be making it difficult for uh, for a lot of teams, and I've seen that in the previous games that they've played as well. You know, so we can expect a team that's really up for it. Um, you know, against us, um, of course. You know, not giving us too much time on the ball, or not giving us too much space, at least to to play. And we need to again be ready for that. Uh, you know, that counter attack as well. Yeah, uh, teams down the bottom are are fighting, fighting for 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 their lives. And um, I know it's it's midway through the season, but it's it's never nice to be to be down to be down uh, the bottom bottom end of the table. And uh, um, yeah, it's going to be another tough game. Burton have been have been tough over the last last year or so and uh yeah it's always you know what I mean it's always gonna be it's always gonna be tough. It's all the all the games are tough no matter no matter where the teams are in the league and uh we're just looking to um to to win the game like we always do at the midday. Well as you can see I'm delighted to be joined for the very first guest on the Royal Exchange. It's running vice captain Chris Gunter. Chris, thanks very much for joining us and being the first guest on the show. Yeah, my pleasure. First of hopefully many. Um, unfortunately, we haven't got a win to talk about. Um, a tricky couple of weeks with the end into the Cardiff game mm. and then the difficult trip to Portman Road. How is the mood around the camp going into Christmas? Yeah, really good. Um, even though we, like you say, we, we the last couple of games we haven't had the, the results. I think for, for the majority of the game against Cardiff, we played really well. Obviously, when you're tuning up, it's disappointing to you know to to concede and and lose the lead. Um, and Ipswich again, as we've been saying for a while now, we, we've been playing well, um, and, and you know we didn't take our chances, and we conceded two poor goals, um, which is disappointing. But in the main, you know it, it feels slightly better when you you do perform quite well. Um, but we know that now our task is to to put it all together and make sure that you know we we couple the performances with the results. You were a Nottingham Forest player. Mm -hmm. On the night, Reading won promotion, Mikael Leisurewood scoring yeah. late on to send us up to the Premier League. What, what is it like being a player in that scenario where it's sort of the, the whole stadium almost is, you know, wildly celebrating and you're just sort of, you know, on that other side, outside looking in? Yeah, it was a strange night, obviously. You know you come into a place where they can they can sort of achieve, you know, the the ultimate really in terms of our league. Um, it was it was quite a big night for us ourselves, actually. I think we were, we were down the bottom that year um, after two years of... I've been in the playoffs, um, and I think we still needed a point or two to to secure our safety in the league. So, as much as we knew we was coming to Reading, that you know needed to get the points for promotion, um, you know we needed them ourselves. I think in the end, results went for us elsewhere, and and it worked out perfect in terms of Reading winning the winning the game. And, and I think we were safe pretty much after that night as well. But yeah, it's a strange one because, like I say, you know you're coming somewhere where. You know, it's the biggest game. Then of, of they know what they need to do, um, and yeah, well, I mean, once the final whistle, when you try and go over to the away fans, but it was, it was <laughs> a bit of a hard actually getting pitch. to them. Um, but it was nice in a way because you know knew a few of the players over the years, um, Hal and Church and stuff that were involved, and it was nice after the game to congratulate them because any team that that earns promotion, uh, you know, has done really well. Um, so yeah, it was a, a strange night, but one when you look back now. You know, with hindsight and stuff, we um, obviously myself. I don't think G played that night, but a couple of months later, we were we were joining the club. Absolutely, and, and that was my next question. How soon did you find out about Reading's interest? Uh, um, did you have any offers, uh, other offers that summer? Yeah, I knew before the game. Really? No, I'm joking. Oh, um, <laughs> come on. No, I didn't know. Um, it, it came about in the summer. Um, it happened fairly quickly. Um, the the last stages took took a little bit of a while. 
Um, but I, I was back in pre-season at Forest at that point. Um, so you, you do hear bits and bobs before. And and once, you know, sort of the bids are going in, you, you sort of have a feeling it may happen. Um, and yeah, maybe because of, of a couple of months before of being here and, and seeing them in promotion um, and having that experience of seeing what it meant to them and, and playing at the stadium and things like that. Yeah, it was it was nice to to have seen the uh, you know first hand you know when they did when they did get promotion um but yeah yeah i think it took it was a good few months after that yeah and it didn't take you long you know we talked about you being a striker showing that that predatory mm. instinct yeah. second game here against peterborough you score your first reading goal yeah. we've got it on on the computer for us take us through this one my the obvious question here is chris did you mean it um i'd love to say yes um no, it was uh, it was just uh, a ball into the box. I think I'm not sure the score at that time, but we unstarted the game too well. Um, so it was well, the camera's not even on me there. I don't even know if I scored. Um, <laughs> but no, it was left foot as well. Yeah, no, I mean they are the balls. If they if they're in the right area and stuff, they they can you know not get a touch and go in. Um, it wasn't you know the most glamorous way to open your mark for your new club, but. Uh, no, I think we won the game on, on that night. And after, you know, it was nice to, you know, to have get your first goal, albeit in a in a cup game. Um, and yeah, it was it was pleasing that, personally, that was, was my first win really for the club. Um, so yeah, it was it's a nice feeling to score. However, they go in. I had to wait a little bit longer for the second one. Four years later, mm. against your old club, Forest. This time, uh, what I want to know is, has Gareth McCleary? let up the fact and given you has he let you forget the fact that he was the one set it up for you no we have talked about it but I think he had scored only in the first half as well so it was a, it was a decent day um, for G um, funny obviously both against our former clubs um, this one was yeah was slightly better um, when you're on the pitch you, you know it's quite close into the goal and I think the more people I told after and the more I got asked about it it, it moved and I think the the tenth person I was telling it, it it formed to outside the box and and was an absolute rocket. But um, no, again that was one where it was nice. They sort of gave us a little bit of a cushion in the game, um, and we was doing well at this point. And and yeah, to to score your first you know league goal at, at your home ground, you know, like I say, albeit after many years, is is a nice feeling. This one that you know being a defender and, and my record, you don't get that feeling too often. So. You know, to win the game, you know, for me, Angie, to score against our former clubs was a nice feeling that evening and, and it sort of was adding to a, a very good season. Yeah, we see, this seems to be the era of the, you know, the elaborate celebrations. It kept it very simple. Didn't no, have one in your head. You know what, I, I, I think you could, I could plan any celebration I would forget <laughs> as soon as it goes in. It's one that I'm not sure if you used to score in every week what it feels like. Um, but no, once the ball goes in, it, it, it is weird how you... You forget some or almost where you are, um, and yeah, just I think at first shock that it's gone in, um, and then before you know it, the boys are around, and and yeah, it's one that I would like to have the feeling more, but I'll, I'll take I'll take any goal I'm given. Hope, hopefully, one on Saturday. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, there's that partnership we saw it there, the, your partnership with Gareth down the right hand side. A lot of fans have really enjoyed that over the past few years. Mm. How much easier is it for you as a player having someone in front of you that you know so well? Yeah, well, I mean, originally when we joined, again, it was nice that we knew each other. Um, like I say, we knew a couple of the players, you know, when we joined, but there's nothing like, you know, a, a real familiar face, you know, day to day. Um, so that helped originally. And yeah, we've now been playing together for probably eight, best part of eight or nine years. So yeah, you get to learn what each other's going to do on the pitch. And, and I think we've had some, some real good times together here. Um, he scored couple more goals than myself and only a couple yeah um but no it, it is enjoyable you know to play with him and like i say over a number of years you know day to day you you get to know what what he's going to do and, and i've always said when he's fully fit and he's, he's playing well there's not too many better in the league well we are coming up to christmas one of the busiest times in the championship calendar what is it what's it like at christmas for a, for a professional footballer for yourself i mean what will christmas day be like in the gunter household um not a lot. I think we're Christmas. You get to know that 
that there's not really a Christmas as a footballer. Um, I think we're training sort of mid-afternoon. Um, we'll train, we'll eat together, and then we'll get on the bus and go down to Bristol. So um, no, there, there's nothing too special. There's not much you can do. Um, and again, yeah, it's a busy busy period. Obviously, we play Boxing Day a couple of days later, and then again on on New Year's Day. I think it is. So it's a busy time, but it's one where, in terms of football, you know. People are off work. People love to come to games. It's, it's a tradition in this country that people come and and watch football. The crowds are generally a lot bigger, um, and and that's a good thing. And also in terms of of the actual football and stuff, it's a good chance. You know, if you can put a run together over that period, that you can get uh, you know a high number of points in a short space of time, and things can look a whole lot different. So it's a really important time, and I think you always pinpoint the the Christmas period, the New Year period of. Of an important stage of the season. Obviously, we're coming into it now. We have some some good games coming up, so hopefully, we can we can get on a run um, and, and shoot ourselves up the league. Well, we are in the build-up to Christmas, and a few days ago, Chris and some members of the Reading First team made a very special visit to the Royal Berkshire Hospital. Hi, Hey, say hi. Hey, hi. hi. so shocked. Hi. Hey, uh, you got a little present for you. Christmas. Take it. Nice to meet you all. This is a really good thing for you guys to do and take your time. You show? Bus. It's a bus. It's a bus. Do you like building house? Don't you? It's your favourite thing to do. Can I go in and have some more? Can I have some more? There's something we do every year as a football club. Um, I think it's important for us to, to come and if we can bring a couple of presents and, and make people's day for, for an hour or two, then uh, I think being so close to the community as the club are, yeah, it's really important. Yeah, we're in such a, a privileged position. If you can come and, and put a smile on somebody's face, as I said, then it's um, it's a nice feeling. But it's not it's not for us. It's something that we feel as a club is important to come and and be close to our you know our fans and our community and stuff around the town. So yeah, something that is important for the club to do, and it's it's an honour for us as players to, to do it. So Chris, we saw you there making that visit with, with some of your teammates. How nice is it to go out and try and make a difference as a footballer? Yeah, I think it's something that players do at this time of year. A lot of clubs do it. Um, I think it's important, obviously, like I said, that you know you can go and, and sort of have a a little impact on, on the people that, that are in your sort of town and your community, really. Um, it, it's obviously not for us because... You know, you go there to to try and you know cheer some of the kids up. It's never nice being in hospital, but especially at at this stage of the year, where you know, especially for kids, where Christmas is probably the highlight of their year. Um, and like I say, it's not for us, but it does give you a a nice feeling, and it's important to remember that you know we're in in quite a priv privileged position that you know we can go and you know and take some you know take some presents for them. We have a a whip around amongst the players and, and we go out and buy the presents and then we go and take them to them. So no, it's important, it's something that I think most clubs should do and it's something that, like I say, since I've been here we've always done. Um, and, it, and it gives you a nice feeling but it's a nicer feeling to see them, you know, sort of happy to, to see you, especially the ones you can you can find who are Reading fans and, and stuff like that. So yeah, it's important to do and, and I think it's something that the boys really enjoy. Absolutely, and from making a difference off the pitch to trying to make a difference on it, we, we are building up to that 500th game, mm. 500th game here at Medeski Stadium. We touched on one of the nights that you were an opposition player here, but you've been part of some massive nights here as well, including two Wembley clinching wins mm. over Bradford in the FA Cup and Fulham in the playoffs here last season. Out of the two, which was the more special for you? Um, you'd probably have to say the, the playoff game. I think, yeah, the cup is fantastic to you know to go and and get there. 
in the league that season we weren't doing particularly well so I think it was important that we gave you know ourselves and our fans and, and the club something to look forward to in terms of that but you know especially last season having such a good year um, I think we only lost two games all season here in cup including the cup and the playoffs um, so yeah it was nice to to keep the dream alive obviously we we all know how it ended um, but at that point you, you're not sure you know what, what's going to happen so yeah I would say the Fulham game last year I think you know the semi-finals are always special games it's, it's over the course of obviously two games but but what you've done for the previous 46 as well so um, the Bradford one was special um, but no I've had to pick one the, the Fulham one was was a real nice feeling and, and the atmosphere that night was was tremendous and and also obviously after the game in the changing room was was a special night for us. You've gone on record before as saying you know, he's the best or one of the best coaches you've worked under. What makes him stand out above some of the other managers you've worked under? Um, yeah, I think I've I've gone on record to say he he's the best club manager I've played with um, or under. He um, I think originally the the impact he had when he came to the club. Like I say, the last couple of years haven't been haven't been the greatest for us before he came. Um, we had a lot of change every year and last summer was no different um, but he came in and and changed an awful lot and and quite quickly we were getting results on the pitch um, and doing really well um, that obviously is what you see on a weekend or a Tuesday night but for us every day around the training ground is is where it happened really um, the things he he teaches us I think a lot of players have have also come out and said it's almost like an education in a way that he the way he he explains what he wants and the things we work on is completely different I think to what any player has had in, in clubs previous um, so yeah it's just the way he he simplifies it for us the the identity I think we have as a team and a squad I think the main thing is we all enjoy we all enjoy playing that way um, obviously more so last season we were getting some very good results um, but like I say, this year the performances in the main, especially over the last sort of two or three months, have been really good, and and they're not too dissimilar to last year. The only thing missing is the results. But I think if you're doing that over a sustained period of time, the results will come back. Um, so yeah, I think it's just the way he is as a coach, and then add into that the way he is as a person and and the respect he shows, not just the players um, around the place, but also the the staff you know around the training ground and the stadium and the club itself so the way he's changed the club and, and I think the way he's calmed it down like I say over the last couple of years there's been a lot of change um, yeah the, the things he's done I think now the club's in a stable position and he's been a huge part of that Internationally you've enjoyed great success as well reaching the semi-finals at the Euros in 2016 you're closing in on that all-time caps record as well how much do you enjoy going off and playing for your country? Yeah, it's nice. I mean, I think it's the greatest honour you can have as a player. It's, it's always been something I've enjoyed doing, especially over the last maybe three or four years. We're, we're in the main, we've done really well. Um, the the excitement levels back home um, over that period have been something that I don't think Wales have had for, for many, many years. Um, we, we've obviously broken a lot of records. We've made history um, and we've done it with a with a squad that have been together in the main for for a long period of time so it's been something that we've enjoyed doing um and yeah there's there's nothing better as a player than going back home you know and representing where you're from um and and you know how much it means to them and obviously doing well as well so i think that has been a real enjoyable time and and it and it makes it easier when you come back to uh to a to a predominantly english sort of squad when you're doing well and because there's been times over the years when you've you've returned from international games and you've got a lot of stick and stuff so it's been <laughs> nice over the last couple of years to um yeah to sort of to quiet them down slightly well that run uh to the semi-finals in france has been made it's made into a film and it's been written down now by one of your teammates dave edwards in his book mm. as well what's it been like reliving it through his point of view no well i haven't had it yet um, you're not no he hasn't given me a copy um christmas present It'll be coming. I am expecting one if he's watching, um, but no, it, yeah, obviously you, you, you know, we all we all had a, the same experience, but through different eyes, really. So I'm sure, you know, when he does, um, when he does leave one in my place, and I do get round to reading it, they'll be nice to to sort of relive those. Um, and he's a he's a very intelligent guy, and I'm sure, you know, he, he's 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 put that experience 
you know, into his book, um, and he's done it justice because he, he's a he's a clever guy and he, he's really switched on. So yeah, looking forward to reading it and. Yeah, I'm sure he'll be happy with the with the plug we've just given him. Absolutely, and it can be bought in all, all reputable bookstores now. <laughs> um, I, I will expect my commission in the post, Dave. Um, let, let's talk a little bit more about off the pitch things. You've been spotted at plenty of music festivals over the years uh, at Reading, at Glastonbury. Is music the the main way you sort of escape? Um, maybe not the main way because there's, there's only certain times you can go. But this this year worked out. Yeah, was able to go to Glastonbury because. I had uh, an extra week off um, after the, the playoffs and the international break. Um, and yeah, then there's a good few of us who went to Reading Festival. I think it was after the Birmingham game this season. Me, um, Liam Moore, George Evans, Pella, um, Swifty. So there's quite a few of us who, who went to Reading as well and we had, a, we had a great time on the Sunday. Does Yap have to tell you don't go don't go into the mosh pit, don't go too far forward? Well, it was like I say, it was okay after that. I think it was after Birmingham and it was international break. So yeah. the boys had, had two weeks off and I wasn't meeting up till the Monday. So, um, no, we had a real good day and, and I think now we, we've started something where every year there'll be a lot more going. Um, but no, it's something that I enjoy doing and it's somewhere where you can go that you don't get to do too often. Um, and yeah, it's probably my... If I could pick something to do away, would be going to a to a gig or a, or a concert. Or Who's festival. the highlight? Who's the best one person you, or band you've seen? The best one I've ever seen was Glastonbury years ago. I think it was five five six years ago. Mumford and Sons. They were on the fright. We we did the whole thing. We camped um, for the four sort of three four days, um, and they were on the the Friday. And I think they were they were incredible. They're probably my my favourite band if you like overall which people may be surprised but yeah Mumford and Sons were, were brilliant and they're probably the best I've ever seen live yeah a little bit different from when we had Marcus Hanneman here and it's Tool and Megadeth and things yeah, like yeah. that so uh, I'm not going there yeah, yeah maybe good he'd left the club before yeah. he arrived um, before we let you go then a couple of quick fire questions that around this 500th game we've got coming up who's the best player you've played with <laughs> I knew here this at was coming. I knew this was coming I was trying to think of the answer um what for Redden? Oh, or it could be a, a Forest teammate. No, I'd have to go Redden. Um, probably get a last stick from the boys now if they do see this. I think the best I've played with um, for enjoyment as well, and because of, of obviously being best mates and stuff, would be G. Um, yeah, we we've, we've obviously been here for the the same amount of time. Pretty much, he joined probably a couple of weeks before me, but we've had some, some real good times here. Um, some, like you, you mentioned, some of the games we've played in. Um, so yeah, I'd probably say G for the uh, the experiences and the enjoyment we've had over those five, five six years. I thought when you said enjoyment, you were going to say Royston Drenter then. Huh. But, um, well, he was a character, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I wouldn't be Royston. Ah, I'm sure, sure a very close second. And um, the best you've played against? Um, Uh, this could be a while, I think. Um, again, probably taking the easy option. Um, the the first year in in the Premier League when we played Tottenham, I was playing right back and, and Gareth Bale was left midfield. He scored that day. Um, obviously, being Welsh, I'm gonna have to <laughs> stick to my roots. So um, yeah, I'd probably say Gaz. Yeah. I must. I I can only imagine the the, the pre-team briefing where it's like, okay, Chris, you you've got Gareth. Yeah try and try and stop him how 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 do you even try no do you know what i think on the day we i think we ended up losing three one three yep. no three one um but we played we actually played okay um they they caught us on the break a couple of times um but no he, he's a he's a tough player to stop obviously and i think that day they had some some good players i remember a couple of the midfield players saying dembele in, in in the center of the midfield was was a tough one to play against as well um but naturally when you're on the pitch you think of the ones directly up against you um and yeah that we had a spell in in that season where we had a, a tough run of games where every week we were playing against top players um and yeah it, it is difficult but it's something that obviously you enjoy doing but no like i say for for the welsh connection i, I will say him I, I do not blame you. I can't say I, I would fancy going up against Gareth anytime soon. And and finally then, before we let you go, and thanks for giving us your time, 
what message would you give to, to any fans out there ahead of the Christ, this Christmas? Um, enjoy your Christmas if you have time off. Enjoy it, um, and just try and try and come down to the stadium. Obviously for for the weekend um, and the games we got coming up, um, and stick with us and and try and try and you know like I say back us as much as you can. Um, you know there, there's nobody that wants to do better on the pitch than the players and the staff. Um, you know we want to to do well for the club um, which is obviously the fans are the biggest part of that so yeah to come and support us um, and 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 hopefully like I, I touched on earlier we can get it, get into a, a run of form at home like we were last season where you know if you was coming to the stadium you you generally didn't see too many off days um, we've had a couple more than than what we would have liked so far but there's still a long way to go in terms of the home games this season so yeah, come and support us, and hopefully we can repay you with with the with the kind of performances and results as we had last season. Well, fingers crossed, Chris. Thanks very much for for being our first guest here on the Royal Thank Exchange. Thank you very much. Cheers. Well, we've been building up to this 500th game at Badesky Stadium. We've been replaying some of the classic moments. We've been asking you what your favourites were. We've been revealing that top five this week. And we're going to recap what's made it in there, as well as exclusively revealing what made it to the very top of the list.
Fast Archer. And Kitson is ended up in the back of the net anyway. Kitson gets the ball. And that Middlesbrough lead is looking pretty fragile now. And it's gone because Sidwell has made it 2 2. Game on here. Challenge. Click from Murty. Sol's ball in. And it's still loose. And it's Lita! From 2 0 down, the Premiership New Boys lead 3 2. That's it. Fabulous for Reading. 2 0 down. After not much more than 20 minutes. What a recovery. So there you have it, Middlesbrough, the best game from the first 499 played here at Medeski Stadium, but will number 500 provide a few memories of its own? Burton and Albion will be the visitors here tomorrow, and they don't come here in the greatest of positions in the league. They currently sit 22nd in the championship inside those relegation places, and as you can see from their last six results, not an awful lot to smile about if you're a Burton fan right now. However, the positive side of things for them is that they did win on their last game. That came away at Bolton. Let's have a look at how they got off. Saturday's visitors, Burton, might be scrapping at the wrong end of the league table, but they have taken plenty of scouts during their time in England's second tier, and Bolton were the latest to fall foul to the Brewers last weekend, who leapfrogged their hosts. The Trotters could have gone ahead through the opportunism of Will Buckley, but he was denied by an acrobatic stop by Stephen Bywater. And minutes later, it was the same Bolton player and the same result as Buckley's first time volley lacked conviction. Ten years ago, and Nicholas and Elka led Bolton were competing in the UEFA Cup, while Burton muddled to mid-table in the Football Conference, and how times have changed for both clubs. Lloyd Dyer was the first to go close for the visitors, forcing Ben Olnwick into a save at his near post. But Dyer wasn't to be denied for too much longer. Hardly the cleanest of hits from the former Leicester man, but the bobbling ball flummoxed the trotter's stopper for the game's only goal. Burton's hopes of staying afloat for a third season at this level may rely on their defensive resolve. If this is anything to go by though, they have every chance. David Wheater denied for Bolton by the woodwork and skipper Darren Prattley kept out a mass of Burton bodies. Bolton threw everything forward in search of a leveller, including their goalkeeper, but a late chance was shanked and the Albion held on for just their fourth win of the campaign to date. Well, if you are planning to make the trip here to Medeski Stadium tomorrow, a couple of pieces of information to bear in mind. The key one, get here early. We're expecting a big crowd and don't worry, we've got lots to keep you entertained before kickoff. For two hours before kickoff, outside the East Stand at the Fan Zone, we will be showing some of the greatest moments here at the Mad Stand on the big video screen. And if you're hungry, if you fancy a drink, lots of offers for you to take up as well. So get here nice and early. Get yourself settled, get a bit of food in you, get a drink and bask in some of those glorious memories we've been touching on throughout the show so far. But don't worry if you haven't got your ticket yet, fear not. They are still available and they are priced just £5 for all areas of the ground. So no excuse, get yourself down here and check out what is sure to be a very special day and hopefully three points for the Royals as well. So head over to readingfc.co.uk for all your ticket information and bits and pieces. Meanwhile, if you are a season ticket holder and you've not yet checked it out, why not have a look at the Royals Rewards Scheme? It launched at the start of this season and it gives you access to some fantastic, one-of-a-kind opportunities that you just won't get anywhere else. Head over to readingfc.co.uk and for more information on that, we've got a handy demo video. So if you're not sure how to set it up, don't worry. This takes you through step-by-step step and it gives you everything you need to know. So head over again to the website for much more information on that one and that just about wraps up the first edition of the royal exchange hope you've enjoyed the show by all means send us in your feedback tweet us into at reading fc on twitter or drop us an email or head over to facebook leave a comment on this video below let us know what you'd like to see on the show anyone you'd like to see us interviewed we're more than open to your feedback so please do get involved in the meantime as mentioned if you haven't got your ticket yet for tomorrow go out and get one head on down to the mad stud you heard what chris said they need that support and hopefully they're going to get the first of what will be a series of wins over the christmas period i've been dan wimbush this has been the royal exchange go on you ours
Yes! <laughs>